Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, doing another axe video. Just because uh, that's kind of all I got going on right now. Um, I do have a, a tree job coming up this weekend. I'm going to film it. It's going to be a simple, easy tree. Uh, so yeah, I'll have, a, I'll have a tree video coming out probably this weekend. I'm going to do it Saturday morning. I'll probably come home and, and make the video. And Saturday night, I'll probably have the video up. I know you guys like watching tree work. Uh, and I enjoy doing the tree work videos more, but um, there's only so much of it going on right now. So, um, you guys won't, don't want to miss this one coming up though, because uh, it's for my dad. It's going to be at my dad's house, and uh, there's a story behind the tree. So, um, you guys are going to have to stay tuned and, and watch for that video to come out. Um, yeah, so anybody that's already subscribed, thanks. Uh, that helps out a lot. If you're not subscribed, maybe consider it and hit the bell notification. And then uh, you guys can see when, when that video comes up. So, um, so yeah, today I'm doing something different. This is going to be a personal axe. Uh, I got some handles that uh, are from Canada. I don't know if you guys can read that, but these are uh, Buck and Billy Ray's handles. He sent me a couple of them. He sent me uh, he sent, sent me a splitting axe handle and a wedge bringer. So I don't know if you guys can see that with the light like that, but here's what they're looking like. I come across a lot of handles and uh, these ones seem legit so um, we're gonna give it a shot I'm gonna hang uh, I'm gonna hang this Kelly Dandenong for it's it weighs in about four pounds it's got a really good stamp uh, this is a uh, one I kept for my personal and the cool thing is it's it's a Canadian one a really nice Canadian one so it's a Canadian head going on a Canadian handle I figured that'd be a good match um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the fitting started and I'm just gonna show key points um, I might show the wedging or I might show how I dress up the palm swell so right on stay tuned All right, I got it fitted. Uh, now it's time to cut the curve. Uh, these handles don't come with the curve started, which is fine. I kind of prefer it like that. I'd rather, I'd rather do my own curve. It, I just like the way the fitting process goes without a curve in there. So I'd rather do it after the the head's fitted. And you can see we got we got contact all the way around. A little bit of curl. Um, so yeah, Distal, she's over here whining already. She follows me out to the shop every time I come out here because her food's right here. And she thinks she's gonna get fed and after about 10 minutes she starts whining. So I'm gonna let her out. Go ahead. All right, here we go.
I like to waller it out a little bit, get it thicker, be able to fit more wedge in there. If I just cut it straight without uh, sliding it back and forth and wallering out, the, um, the curve's too narrow. It's hard to get wedge down in there. Yeah, and since there's a lot of curl, that tells me that the inside of the bottom of the eye is sharp. So I'm just gonna take that edge down. Now normally I would uh, I would sand it all down and burn it, but I'm not gonna burn this one because it's I don't want to mess this up, you know. And I I burn all my handles, so uh, I don't mind having one or two that's not burnt. I think the burn look looks better, but I'm not gonna do it on this one. So um, my next step is I'm gonna sand. Do the final sanding, get this, uh, get this curling off of here, sand all the grind marks, and, um, yeah, then I'll probably, then I'll probably put the head on and then I'll dress up the palm swell. All right, we're all sanded up. I got the head just sitting on there right now. I'm gonna make sure it's all lined out. Looking pretty straight. That's about all I'm gonna do is I'm starting to get a tiny bit of curl right there, but I can't see any I can't see any air through there or light through there at all when I look down it and when I look right here it's it's solid all the way around. Alright, let me get a wedge made up and I'll turn the camera back on. Alright, I got a wedge made up. Went with red oak. There it is. Kind of a thinner wedge. Kind of a thinner curve. I don't have a whole lot of space to fill. So I'm not really expecting this to go all the way flush down, but I'm gonna get it in there as good as I can. I got a little gap here on the top I gotta fill. So here we go. Uh I do my wedging a little different, so I'll sit it in there and kind of like tap it down, get it, get it in the eye. It's starting to go down in the eye. And I'll get it in there kind of good. And uh, the first few good smacks that I give it, I turn it, I turn it upside down, and I put it down on the ground, and I hit the bottom of the palm swell and. And I drive that wedge in from the bottom and my theory behind that is um, when you're hitting the bottom of the axe handle it's it's driving the head on the handle and pushing the wedge in at the same time so um, I mean I've, I've done it every way you can do it and I found that this way works really good and I only I only do that until I get it down in there about halfway and then I'll then I'll show you how I do the rest of it. So 
So that's about halfway and you can see it curling up on each side and then I take a razor knife and I start scraping that stuff off. Get it kind of flush so it's easier. Next time I hit on it, it'll be easier because there'll be no resistance on either side. And a lot of you might think, well, why don't you fit your wedge to your eye long ways before you put it in there? And uh, I like this way because it's basically scraping off all the access. And so I know that it's, it's gonna be the exact shape of the eye by cramming it in there and having it curl off the sides, you know? I know that it's, um, I feel like it's a tighter fit that way. It's probably a little bit harder to get the wedge in like that, but see, we're, we're pretty much uh, got all the spaces filled already except for these top corners. So then I just start hitting on it. I'm going for probably another, I'm going for probably at least another quarter inch. And uh, some of these, when it gets real tough, I'll, I'll hit on one side of the, I'll hit on the back of the wedge or the front to purposely try to get it to crack. And uh, I noticed like if I just keep hitting it like this and it, it's not going nowhere and I hit on one side and I get it to crack and it's basically I separate that wedge into two and then I'll hit one and then hit the other, hit one and hit the other and I can get it to, I can get that whole wedge to come down a lot farther by doing one side at a time. It's kind of the same concept of um, driving two wedges into a back cut, you know, you alternate. Uh, you're hitting one, then you're hitting the other, and they're working with themselves. And uh, it's the same concept. I don't think we're going to have to do it on this one. We're pretty much almost already there. I'm just going to go for a little bit more. And I also check to make sure it's not, uh, it's not coming up or moving at all. we got a little bit of curl right there. So that takes care of that. The head's not moving up or down. So we're good that way. I'm going to go one more time. See, I got it to crack. Got that side down more. Get the front down more. Back. And it's going in easier now. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to get that whole wedge in there like that. And this is just how I do it. I mean, there, there's a thousand ways to do it. This is how I like to do it. I'm almost there, you know. It's probably good like that. I'm going to go one more time. You can feel when it's bottomed out, uh, the wood will start just smashing. And it's kind of starting to smash on that one right there. So this one broke into three pieces and I don't mind that. I actually prefer that. We got some good spread out this way. So the next thing is, is to trim this off. I'm going to trim that off and I'm going to, I'm going to shape the, the palm swell. And uh, 
I go ahead and I sand on it and make it look real nice. But I, I like to leave at least a quarter inch up here. I never I never cut them flush. I like I like leaving wood up here that spreads out over the top of the the head without too much. If you got too much up there when you're splitting this up, wood will start scraping on there and start breaking up the wood and stuff. So uh, next is I'm gonna figure out what kind of shape I want to go on this with the palm swell. Probably just gonna end up cutting this corner off and. Hopefully you guys can see that with the light right. Maybe I'll bring bring it over here. We got a good nice tight fit all the way around, no gaps. No gaps down there. And this is uh this is what I do with the palm swell. I basically just took that corner off and then sanded it and rounded it over. So that's it. We just got to throw some oil on it. I use linseed. When I don't burn them, I use linseed oil. I'm not trying to go for that dark look on this one. And, uh, so we're just going to go linseed on this one. I like to use a good healthy amount. one of my favorite parts because especially when you burn a handle and then you put oil on it and you get to see like the final look of it and uh the blonde look is growing on me i've done a couple recently where i didn't burn them and uh this looks kind of it's kind of growing on me i know once you use it it's going to start getting dirty and it's going to start getting real dark right in here but just a different look. I like to get oil in those cracks on the top and bottom. Usually I'll just uh, I'll take a corner of the rag and I'll dip it down in here. Put a bunch on there. Let it sit in that crack for a little bit. So if there was any gaps, oil is going to seep down in there. And with all the access oil, I, I wipe the head down to stop it from rusting or, you know, some kind of protection on it. Basically that's it. It's the finished axe. Uh, usually after I get to this point I throw it in, on that crate over there and I turn the fan on and I let it sit in front of the fan for a good 15-20 minutes or longer and then I'll come out here and I'll, I'll oil it down one more time. That way it has a couple chances for oil to soak into it. So yeah, right on. Uh, this is a personal axe, it's not for sale. Uh, the Canadians are probably drooling over it. Um, it turned out awesome. 
I'm not I'm not burning my name in there because it already has somebody's name on it. I'm not trying to say that I that I made that handle or anything. So Kelly Dandenong Tamas uh, ta excuse me Tasmanian four pounds. Uh, I bet it ended up right around 30 inches. Yeah, right at right at 30. Get a wedge shot again here real quick. Nice fat wedge, red oak. Don't really get much nicer than that. So right on guys, thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, I got a tree video coming up this weekend. Pretty excited about Andrew is gonna be helping me. Um, so stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, maybe subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way you'll know when the video pops up. Right on, thanks.